Welcome to the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm your host, Ash Oro, and this is episode 84, Putting the User First, Why Metal Pay is Focusing on the Experience. Let's rock. Hey, what's up, Liberty Nation? Welcome back to Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm your host, Ash Oro, and today we've got Marshall Hayner. He is the CEO and founder of Metal, which is basically like a crypto Venmo. A pay- they're a payments company that bridges the crypto payments and with the legacy financial system. This hits near and dear to my heart. As you know, I was in uh, the banking industry for a couple years. This is, I expect, a great conversation um, today. Marshall, welcome to Liberty Entrepreneurs. Thanks for having me on, Ash. Yeah, so fill in, the, fill in the gaps here of who you are, what your bio is, and how you got into crypto. Yeah, so my background is I'm one of these early crypto people. Um, I, I happened to be lucky enough to stumble on it um, in, in the very beginning in 2009. And part of that was because of my interest in decentralized technology and um, just being kind of a, a geek looking for, for things to play with on the internet. And uh, I... You know, when I was when I was growing up, um, when I was in high school, when I was uh, you know going off to college, I was you know uh, I was living during the Napster time. You know, Napster was the cool hot new thing, and then uh, and then from there, you know, Direct Connect in college and LimeWire, Kazaa for those that remember it, um, and then BitTorrent. BitTorrent was so cool; it just blew my mind. Eighty um, percent of all internet traffic is routed through this decentralized system, and what I thought was really cool was it was it was harder to censor. So it, it made, you know, journalism in different parts of the world um, much more, uh, you know, possible. It allowed people to share files that they couldn't normally or just share them more efficiently and faster. And I could see this is where the internet is going. We're going to become this decentralized system. And the more we decentralize, the more power we give to people. And that just blew my mind. Um, and yeah. so I became obsessed yeah, I've, I've, I've got to stop you there because I, I was on the original Napster back in like yeah. 1999 and yeah. uh, I wasn't as smart as you were. I was, I was so focused on BitTorrent and just like seeding and leeching and like trying yeah. to download all this awesome content that just wasn't on the internet yet. I mean, you know, back in the day, Scour and Kazan and all this stuff, where there was no YouTube. So this was the source for our content. I didn't, I didn't put BitTorrent and and bitcoin together till about 2011 and 12 but yeah it's it's always fun i could talk for hours about this but what what was finally the switch about bitcoin that you were like oh my god this is similar to bittorrent and file sharing but for money yeah um so i was also i was you know big on um on on torrents and i thought it was really cool i i kind of followed um the story of bram cohen who created it and i thought Mm -hmm. wow this guy you know created this thing um, you know, with, with a, not, a, not a huge team, but kind of by himself in, a, in his basement, just hacking, builds this amazing protocol. And, you know, so I became a part of a lot of these different um, uh, private communities, uh, torrent tracker sites, and I became so involved. I became obsessed with this idea of, uh, you know, decentralized library of Alexandria. We could have all the movies, all the music. It's not about pirating. It's about just access. Yes, yeah, about I was, having it. Yeah, I would pay a fortune. I, you know, I was when I was part of the, these communities, I was paying more money for CDs, uh, movies, and music than I've ever paid in my life. I'm buying Celine Dion CDs. I'm buying whatever I can yeah. to fill the gaps, right? And uh, in 2009, I'm on a, a site called What.CD. I was an administrator on, and uh, there, a thread pops up, and it says, "I'm Trent Reznor. I want to release my music over What.CD. Um, help me figure out how to do it." And I think the first thought is that's not Trent Reznor. Right. At the end of this, everybody's going to go, he asked me for money on PayPal. Where'd he go? Right. And then, so it's time to lock the thread now. Let's, let's stop fake, fake Trent Reznor from stealing everyone's money. And I said, I heard you were Trent Reznor. Can you please prove that? And mm-hmm. he said, sure. No problem. He tweets from at Trent Reznor verifying my what.cd account. Oh, wow. And, uh, at, that's the moment where I say, oh my God, I'm a huge fan. It's so cool. Um, how can I help? Uh, you know, I think that this is, I think it's awesome that you're doing this. Um, and everybody starts chiming in, coming up with different ideas about how, uh, Trent can release his music over this platform and how he can get paid in a kind of a decentralized manner. And they're all crazy Rube Goldberg, you know, let's strap all these payment options together. And at the end, we'll lump it out to him. It's not going to work. 
right? Mm -hmm. It's clear that it's not going to work, but I thought it was so cool that he was there. And uh, towards the end of the thread, somebody said, what about Bitcoin? And I'm mm -hmm. obsessed with BitTorrent and I think, Bitcoin? Is right. that like decentralized money? Mm. Oh my God. I have to check. I have to, you know, so I click through, I get onto the P2P Foundation website. I read this thread that's going on. I read the original white paper. I happen to be just there at the time. I was living in Boston, Massachusetts um, when, when the, at the time. And uh, I, I just became obsessed. I thought, wow, this is so cool. I didn't understand it right away. It took me about a month or maybe a little over a month to kind of figure it out. Where does it connect to the bank? I, I don't get it. Like, <laughs> right. How do you how do you turn it into money? And at the time, there were no exchanges. So right. people were saying, you know, how do you turn it into money? Well, it's whatever I'm willing to buy it from you for. So find somebody on the forum and ask them. And pretty soon, you know, uh, Bitcoin talk pops up by 2010. And now there's a forum. And we're all trading each other for prepaid gift cards, yep. alpaca socks, order a pizza to my house. That was pretty popular. Right. And Laszlo, the guy who got the, you know, the triple digit million dollar pizza, he wasn't the only one. There were a lot of people getting you know, pizzas and food orders and stuff. I was one of them. I'm ordering for other people. I'm you know, moving thousands of Bitcoins around <laughs> yeah. on Bitcoin QT wallet. I download the original Bitcoin QT wallet and thought, oh my God, this is crap. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think it's such a cool idea, but it's 2009 iPhone iPhone has been out for two years. Um, no one's going to send a mobile payment uh, over you didn't their think laptop. Think of mobile payments. Yeah. I mean, you didn't even think about sending electronic payments like this. Right, right. Well, you know, I, I was thinking about it, but I was, you know, I was, I was also fortunate enough to be one of the first people on, on PayPal, you know, mm. around Napster days, right. Um, yep. When they started. And then I was also one of the first people on Venmo. So to see, to see this come out, I thought, well, man, this is so far behind the times. It's really cool technology, but you know, first of all, we have to prove that this is worth money. So I'm out there trying to prove that it's worth money, um, and I'm I'm just for you know to prove a point. You know, uh, buying and selling lots of Bitcoin um, for gift cards and different things like that, just to say, wow, this is so cool. It we works. Exact, it works. Yeah. It works. Not really great. But, but it works, it works. right? Exactly. And, you know, we're, yeah. We're, yeah, we're we're giving bitcoins away to people just to have them yeah. like. Just try it. Just let me oh, show yeah. you that it works. Like, here's half a Bitcoin. Let me just show you that it works. Yeah, I remember 2011, I moved out to San Francisco, and um, I'm, like, giving cab drivers, like, here's a Bitcoin. Yeah. It's worth $10. Right. right? Like, it's, it's going to be worth a lot of money someday. I, if any of those people held on to those coins, they must be like, that guy, <laughs> he was on some other level, right? Yeah. Um, but... That's that was what I saw, you know, Bitcoin QT. It, it took about like it took about 30 minutes to open, and this is before the blockchain was really like a huge file, right, right for the Bitcoin blockchain. And uh, and I would say about 30 percent of the time, uh, it would crash, mm. and 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 maybe like uh, you know 10 percent of the time, it would actually say your Bitcoin Bit wallet dot dat file is corrupted. No, you have to go onto your hard drive. I don't know if you remember these times, but this was like really brutal times. And I remember thinking, wow, this is so cool. So I started investing. I started stocking up, right? Um, and, you know, I thought I thought $1. When we hit $1, oh, my God, this is it. It's <laughs> happening. But I thought there's no way we could ever go over $20 because that would be it. You know, that would be a half a billion dollars. Right. And there's just no way that could happen. And if that happens, then all then most likely if they could go above that, then all bets are off. It could go to a million dollars. It could right. replace money as we know it or change the face of money. So, you know, 2000, 2011, it hits thirty dollars. Yep. I'm on vacation in Belize and um I uh I I told my significant other at the time, my ex, uh, hey, I gotta fly back to Boston. I've got a lot of money in Bitcoin that needs to get sold right now. <laughs> and, and, uh, and uh, I didn't end up getting back to Boston to sell the uh, Bitcoin. Um, and it goes back down to like two bucks. Like two bucks, like, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, oh, well, when it hits $20 again, I am not going to miss that opportunity. I'm going to make sure. So by 2013, it hits it again. And I sell a lot. I'm thinking I'm really, you know, wow, I'm smart. And I, at the same time, I also had decided that I wanted to make a piece of software. I wanted to contribute to this community in some way mm. after playing it for with it for a couple of years that I, I thought, well, if somebody can make a better piece of software, we could really make this, we could accelerate this whole process. I want to put my name in the cement and say, I was a part of making 
the future of money happen because I thought I was there and I thought it was so cool. And it, it just calls to me. It's calling to me. Like, I feel you. I, right? I'll, I'll never forget the, the energy back in like 2012 and 13. That's yeah. when I got in. And just everybody was Bitcoin everything. Yes. You know, okay, we had yes. we had Litecoin, we had Doge. They're cute, yeah. but uh-huh. Bitcoin was going to be the thing. You know, it's been an interesting evolution here the past couple of years. But I feel you, man. That was an energy. It reminded me of the energy of the old. I don't know if you were a Ron Paul guy back in the day, but that was the same energy I felt in that as well. So it was so. It seems like the concept of metal and metal pay, and you can you know tell us what the difference it, there is, but it seems like it just came from your experience just growing up kind of on the internet, um, just seeing digital files start being distributed, digital money start coming in, being in PayPal early, understand Vimeo. It just it just kind of all came together, didn't it? Yeah, I, you know, I, I basically, I saw that it could be something much bigger. And so I, I kind of set out to build this piece of software. Meanwhile, I'm, you know, reaching out to Bram Cohen, hey, you know, Bitcoin cryptocurrency, this could be something for BitTorrent to really monetize this thing. Um, and, you know, uh, by, by 2013, I started building my first uh, crypto app. And I thought, well, if we could just make it so easy that you could press one button and it would spin up your Bitcoin wallet. And you'd have a little bit and you'd earn it as sort of like a game. Um, and, and everybody was there. If my grandmother could use it, now we're talking, right? Yeah. Now, now we're going to start to see some adoption. So in 2014, we launched QuickCoin, which was my first, uh, my first app uh, that I've ever launched, my first uh, uh, crypto or um, tech company that I, I, had, I had built. And uh, it just took off. My grandmother was on there. Hey, Marshall, I sent my tennis friend some Bitcoin and I sent your sister some Bitcoin too. Right. And, uh, you know, I'm like, wow, this is, this is pretty cool. I, I fell asleep and I woke up to my whole entire Facebook thread of people quit coining each other oh, and, wow. uh, and some, some calls and messages from VCs. Hey, what are you doing right now? <laughs> right. And I'm like, oh, this is cool. It's happening. Right. Um, and, and, you know, from there, uh, the journey has just been amazing. You know, Dogecoin started. Um, you know, end of 2013, beginning of 2014, uh, met Jackson, became friends with Bram, um, you know, started to connect with a lot of people uh, deeper and deeper in the cryptocurrency community. I went to the 2013 San Jose Bitcoin conference. I remember the energy there was, oh my God, yeah. it's happening now. It's not just weird alpaca sock people and right. like, take my Bitcoin and like, I don't want that. Right? It's like people are paying us attention. I can remember the same energy down yeah. at the 2013 Latin American Bitcoin conference in Buenos Aires, Argentina. I was like, wow look at this we're we're not just like alone on our computers right this is like something that's really starting to happen when when did metal and metal pay and what's the difference but when did that really start to kick off and the vision start to become more and more focused for you yeah so i so you know after quickcoin i i left and i joined stellar and i got the opportunity to work with jed mccaleb and the awesome team at stellar and we did something kind of similar for the stellar launch where we created this thing called the stellar wallet and we distributed Stellar based upon, you know, Facebook OAuth and this kind of gamification. And it was awesome. You know, that, that wallet, that application grew to over a million users in under a week. And I, you know, started thinking, oh, my God, people really, really want this. And, you know, Stellar is, is, a, is a platform and isn't so much focused on building, you know, the front end facing part. And so I left to create metal. Um, mm. I, I, I started, you know, I was there was a little bit of interim time where I worked on some other startups, advised some other projects, but, uh, you know, my passion is really in growing this technology and seeing it evolve. And, you know, um, I know you're a big libertarian. I am myself, a lot of our, our colleagues and friends, and you know, what hits home with us is freedom, the ability mm-hmm. to transact, the ability to say, this is mine. And it's not just a credit to a bank or just an IOU, but I can own it. Right. I can have, it's the evolution of money. Now it's cash, but it's on the internet. And I think that that is the fundamental thing that that the mass market doesn't understand yet. If you ask somebody what cryptocurrency is, they say, well, it's something for tech elite people to make money off of, or I don't really understand it, or it's this thing that you gamble and speculate on the price. Um, but the, the reality is, is that it empowers people like we've never seen before and breaks down barriers and is permissionless. And you know, these are all the things that kind of like Andreas Antonopoulos and Eric Voorhees are saying, this is very true. This is what it does. And when people really witness that and say, wow, I can move metal from, from San Francisco to London to Africa and back, and it can all happen in five minutes, um, and nobody needs any permission to receive the payment. 
um, and it's and it's it's final. It has payment hardness. Right. That is really really amazing. That is mind blowing. And that is I think for the mass market when they realize that cash isn't just paper anymore. Right. That's gonna be right. Oh my god. Yeah. Um, and and we know that as crypto people, but the mass market hasn't been able to play with it yet or see that yet. And we're going to have this moment where, you know, we started with, you had a wallet and I had a phone in my pocket, right? And then I had uh, a phone um, with uh, kind of like a wallet attached on the other side, right? And <laughs> right. then we're going to cut this off, right? Yeah. Cut that off. And it's just going to be a phone. In fact, it's probably going to be just a watch. Yeah. Right. But, uh, right exactly. You know, that's yeah, exactly. It's going to be, it's just going to be a wearable and you're probably going to have like some eye contact thing. lens of some yeah. sort. Like exactly. I want a HUD. I want a financial, <laughs> yeah, HUD. I want to, like know my health stats and stuff and my financial stats and like see, see when there's dangerous objects coming or. Yeah. yeah. Whoever's yeah. building that, please get in touch. I want to invest. I want to, I want to influence that product. But uh, yeah. I, 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 you know, that was what was so mind blowing for me was to see that and to see that evolution clearly where we could go. Mm -hmm. And it is my mission and my dream and our, our company's mission and vision to share that with the world, to give, mm -hmm. to give that experience. But cryptocurrency is very technical, very hard in its current form, even almost 10 years from the inception of Bitcoin. And now I think we're finally getting to that inflection point where we can say, now we've got something that everybody can try. And when everybody sees the value, I do believe it's going to be this explosive, um, just momentous growth moment for the world uh, where business starts happening at a higher rate. People are more empowered. Um, yep. You know, uh, parts of the world where a, a woman can't open a bank account, now that can happen. Yeah. Um, you know, all ages, uh, younger, uh, you can be much younger, but you could uh, amass a fortune at, at, at uh, you know, 12 years old. Yeah. Okay? I, I, I mean, never... blockchain is the great equalizer. It offers... Yeah. You know, equal access to anyone like blockchain doesn't care what sex you are what race you are or where you were accidentally born i mean this is this is true separation of money and state and every libertarian should appreciate that and all this like weird infighting you know if there's one thing that libertarians are great at it's like pointing out yeah things from each other but right. but in the bigger scheme of things i think that this this be it Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, whatever, all, all this infighting is, is going to play such a little part in the overall right. revolution, monetary revolution that we're having. And, and it's the separation of the money and state. Everybody wants separation of free speech and state or, or religion and state. But what, what, what do you think it is? Why do you think, and now we're getting a bit libertarian philosophical here, but why do you yeah. think that people don't yet appreciate or even think about the separation of money and state well you know i i just wanted to just rewind it for a second what we were saying earlier uh one uh, you know i was inspired by a lot of books um you know when i was younger cryptonomicon and one of and, and another big one was ender's game recently they turned that into a movie i thought that was so cool because kind of the premise of ender's game is that these two young kids uh in the book i think it's like seven and nine years old become a politician and a military general and they can do it because they can do it over the internet and it's all decentralized and nobody knows, uh, you know, kind of who's who. And politics is sort of like Reddit, where if you're, you have great ideas, you get upvoted. Um, and so, uh, you know, to, now to fast forward to kind of what you're saying, I, um, I, think, that, I think that this technology and, and where the internet is going and what a big part of Web3 is, is building these economies of scale over the internet. And that is what I believe is going to fundamentally change the world in a lot of ways and is going to be this 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 uh, spotlight moment for the internet because i do believe we're about to have radical transparency um with the government with voting with money and it's going to shed light on a lot of things that are really serious problems but we can only fix them unless we start to pay attention to you know maybe we don't have the voter transparency we thought we had maybe we don't have uh transparency into political systems or the monetary system you know, I, I, one of the things that I think is so interesting is that money is kind of like a car. We all drive cars, but very few people know how to completely take them apart and right. take the engine apart and, you right. know, or even, even change the oil, right? Right. right? And so we drive these things around and say, oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a car, right? It's, yeah. Yeah, that's how it works. How does it work? I don't know, some sort of magic, um, yeah. right? <laughs> Something that's over my head. Right. Uh, and I think the same thing goes for money. People, you know, you ask, so the average person you ask somebody you know 
uh, how does money work? And you'll tell you, well, you know, there's this, there's the Federal Reserve. And I'm not really sure about all the details, but, you know, I know but it's that, printed that's printed. And... But, it, you know, but it's backed by the United States government and it works. Um, and, you know, for the most part, it does. In other parts of the world, maybe not so much. Uh, it depends on where you are in the world, right? Uh, but I think the interesting thing is that people have really never really questioned that so much. Like, mm. what is money? Where does it come from? How does it work? And that is a, that is kind of something that I really want to get people to start thinking about and start challenging. And that is really going to open up, you know, Web3 and the decentralized Internet is when people start to say, wait a second, money could be uh, any sort of unit that we can transact with that we agree to, uh, you know, to have some sort of value um, in a decentralized manner. And whatever is the most efficient form of that is going to be the winner. That's, I guess that's Bitcoin and Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, all that infighting, right? right. Um, but Everybody's end, jockeying for money, it seems. Yeah, and but it's understandably. At the end, that's right. And but at the end of the day, we're all in this together. All the cryptocurrency people, we're in this together. We're fighting right. the good fight. We're trying to show people how technology can really empower you. And the marketplace. And, and the marketplace. And I think that this is this is just really an amazing moment. I, you know, for us as a company for metal, we just want to make it easy. We want to make it easy. We want to make it fun. And, you know, just to step outside of the crypto piece for a second, money traditionally is not fun. It's painful for a lot of people. You know, uh, you op we open our bank accounts and, and see, you know, getting down to the end of the month and say, ooh, you know, how, how many times do people, how many people open their bank account and, and look at it and go, yes, right? right. Like, people do that right and so only on payday <laughs> only on payday right and and it doesn't have to be that way it it can be a much more pleasurable experience mm. and we can start to to save and to invest even in micro amounts even in smaller amounts and when we start to dig in to um you know for example uh, i bring i like the car analogy because if you uh, are becoming a car person what's going to happen you're going to you're going to start driving all kinds of cars you're mm. going to start taking them apart. You're right. going to start knowing everything there is, how it works. And sooner or later, you become a mechanic or a car uh, aficionado or, you know, uh, an amateur uh, racer. Yeah. Uh, you're going to be getting out there driving the, the Lamborghinis and the, you know, the awesome cars, even the vintage cars. Uh, you know, that's what cryptocurrency is like for a lot of us, for people in the crypto space. So for people that are watching this that are not yet into crypto, I want you to come and check it out. Come yeah. and play. It's like the coolest if if you're into internet if you're if you're uh if you're a geek like me or even if you're not and you just want to play and you want to experiment with new technologies this is an opportunity this yeah. is a really big opportunity and it's still super early um you know to be on the ground floor of this thing and to be there when it's emerging and isn't um, it amazing to feel that we're still on the ground floor of of blockchain tech i mean it's still it, it for guys like us who have been doing this, it seems like every single day for years, it, yeah. you know, I can even feel myself like, oh my gosh, blockchain, blockchain, blockchain. But it's still so exciting. It's still progressing at such a fast rate. How, how, do, you, how do you think is a good way to get people into crypto? And let's tie this into Metal Pay because I know your team is trying to make this very user-friendly, something that people are used to, sending payments like with PayPal, but incorporating crypto. What does that mean for a new user? Yeah. So I think the thing is, is that, um, you know, we've all kind of experienced this when we tell a friend um, and they say, hey, you know, uh, you know, send me a, they send you a Venmo request or something. You say, hey, I could send you the Venmo request or I could send you some Bitcoin or right. metal or Ethereum. And people say, uh, yeah, yeah, Ash, I, I'm, I'm all set with that. Uh, just regular money, please. Right. right, right. Um, and I think uh, when you kind of when you when you uh, when you look at it, you can. There's different kinds of cryptocurrency. There's there's uh, volatile cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, like metal, and then you have stable currencies like uh, like like Tether and True USD and Basis and Maker, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. um, they have all these different purposes. Now, I think when people have a very pleasurable experience around it, it 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 brings you know the natural questions. It creates an inquisitive nature. Ooh. I just earned, I just earned a little bit of um, crypto. What's that? You know, I want to, I want to play with it. That's what was so cool about Dogecoin is that when, when Bitcoin's starting to heat up and everybody and the price is rising and, and if you want to send somebody ten dollars, you know, it's point one BTC or at this point like point zero 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 one right. BTC, right? Uh, that's that's very intimidating. Um, and it's not a great feeling. And if you lose the private keys or if you don't have like a good experience, you're, you're not going to want to come back. Mm. But if you, uh, you know, for Dogecoin, people 
I, I discovered this awesome community in, in, in 2013, 2014. You show up on Reddit and say, what's Dogecoin? Wow, such fun. 1,000 yeah. Doge. Which, wow. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. it's like, wow, there's like a dog on a coin and it's worth money apparently and it's hilarious. Yeah. And somebody just gave me a couple dollars over the internet. This is, this is really cool. Which is a couple um, thousand Doge, you know. Right, right. And, you know, and that was what was really interesting. You know, it was a mistake in the original Dogecoin code that it would actually, uh, it wasn't meant to mint forever, but that mm. was a mistake that was allowed to persist. And it really proves that, that the money is what we make it. It's, mm -hmm. the, it's the belief we put behind it and the experience we put behind it. And um, it, it, there's all different kinds of, you know, rules. There's the, um, you know, kind of the Mises philosophy, like let's cap it. Then there's, you know, the more, uh, you know, you have like, uh, like the Fed or, or Dogecoin, for example, let's keep expanding it based upon, you know, um, uh, basically, you know, um, infinity coin. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You could just keep expanding it. There's all different kinds of models. And that's, what's so cool about this is that we're, we're now all of a sudden testing all of the assumptions of money. We're testing all these different economic models and we are about to go into light speed in terms of currency um you know what it can do where it can go how it functions what are the best models because we haven't had ever in human history yeah. the ability to be able to experiment with money like this and so that's why i just you know i think for a user coming in i come in i send somebody some metal i, I make a metal uh, a metal to i send metal to you uh and that can be us dollars i send ten dollars to ash and you get you know 20 cents and mm -hmm. you pop it and you go, oh, wow. Um, okay, I do that 10 times, I have $2. And then I go and I tap to pay at Starbucks or I cash it out to my bank and I, I turn that $2 into a cup of coffee or a sandwich and I eat it. Right. And I go, and wow, it's real. okay, well, it's real now because I just digested it. Yeah, so, I mean, even I mean, just, even just last year, people were like, you know, I used to write on Steam a lot, and I would get paid in Steam tokens, and I, they were like, yeah. "Yeah, but these don't, these aren't worth anything." And so one day I was like, "All right, come with me. I'm going to show you how to convert Steam into Ethereum, and I will literally sell Ethereum here in Thailand." And like, right. you, you should see how bright people's eyes get when they're like, "Oh my God, this this is real." You know, you, you talked a lot about. Um, how quickly at lightning speed we're, we're able to change and experiment and evolve, you know, like monetary and fiscal policy, if you will, of these coins. What, what does this mean for the government? Because well, <laughs> I mean, we're going to evolve so quick that their crony economists heads are going to spin. I think, you know, I think that there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of really sharp regulators out there. There are a lot of politicians out there that do want to push these agendas and do want to see innovation happen and you know realistically that is that is the job of regulators that is you know for the good politicians the people that we you know you mentioned ron paul the people that you want to see in office that want to that want to push innovation that want to grow the economy um that want to that want to do really awesome things that is their job that their job is to protect the public and to and to represent the public and this is clearly something the public wants and so I think, you know, there is going to be resistance. There's no doubt. There's, there's also the dark side of that, like the side of, uh, you know, we're going to side with, with the parties that don't want to see this happen and don't right. want to see the innovation happen. So it's a fight, right? It's a battle. Um, but I do believe that we are getting to a point where it's starting to hit mainstream. Mm. And I think that you, you are seeing a lot of really positive regulation in different states. Some, you know, where, you know New York, it's, it's tough. Um, but they are trying to protect the public, right, with the bit license. Um, and then other states like Wyoming, they're just jumping in and they're saying, mm. come here, let's innovate. I think that's great. That's really awesome. I love seeing stuff like that. And I'd, I'd hope to see more states like Wyoming really embracing the technology and Delaware and saying, yeah, come to our state, build, build in this technology. We're going to make, um, we're going to make uh, charters and exemptions for, for new fintech companies. And we're going to structure policy around cryptocurrency. I think for the, the really great regulators and really great politicians that, um, uh, that, that see this, the, uh, the um, senators and the congressmen and congresswomen that are, that are watching this and seeing it evolve, get behind it, help it evolve, because this is going to be a big part of the new economy. Yeah. Um, and I think that really one of the cool things about, about cryptocurrency is that it is, you know, like the internet, it's unstoppable right? It's, mm -hmm. it's just this unstoppable force. So like water, it will find the way to flow through. And that's, it's the honey badger, right? That's yeah. why we love it. That's um, why we love it.
And I think that, you know, I think that you, you either, you either help it along or, or it's just going to move. It's going to move with or without you. The the value that's being created by this whole blockchain cryptocurrency evolution we're going through, it's creating value. And I love it that even politicians aren't outside of the marketplace. And what I mean by that is either they're going to be protecting the incumbent visas or something and not allow, allow this technology to come into their states or they're going to invite this technology to come in there in states yeah. and and th- they and their constituents are going to benefit from the extra jobs that are created the extra value that siphons in towards them you know i assume you guys have like some you've had to have some license of some sort of a money transmitter license or right so um so in the us regulations are really really strict very tough on uh when you start to deal with um with currency uh, and so, uh, yeah, we are in the process of obtaining our money service business license. And then each state has a different license for money transmission. That's the money transmitter license. Mm. Um, we're in the process of obtaining all 50 money transmission licenses. It's a really long, onerous process, about one and a half, two years. Um, that doesn't include the cryptocurrency licenses for different states, for New York State, Washington State, and other, uh, um, other states are coming online with cryptocurrency licenses. So it's a really long process. We've begun that process. Um, and we're very fortunate to have really awesome partners that support us and, and are helping us grow and, and move through that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's difficult. And there's a reason why you don't see a lot of competitors to Venmo, PayPal, Square, um, Zelle, because it's just super hard. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, you not only do you need funding, but you need to have regulatory chops. You need to be able to know how to navigate through those waters. And you also have to um, you also have to have a high level of technical understanding and security. And uh, fintech startup is one of the hardest startups to build, especially when you start to handle fiat currency. And I think one of the reasons why we really haven't seen this adoption is because you know what we're doing at Metal, we're doing some really serious heavy lifting that I think you know for a lot of other companies it was just kind of like well in the short term right now, what people want is just to speculate. So let's sell speculation. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and for what we're doing, you know, it really is a passion. It really is this larger vision. And of course, I think that, that it's, that it's a great business and what we're building is an awesome business. And it really is going into what I call kind of like crypto 4.0. If Mm -hmm. 1.0 was uh, Mt. Gox and uh, BitInstant and uh, Bitstamp, um and uh and like some of the early exchanges were 2.0 and then coinbase and bitpay are 3.0 then 4.0 is the next generation of apps and technologies that make web3 happen um and so for us you know a big part of that is really um being an influencer um trying to get out to capitol hill and work with some of the lobbyist groups like uh digital chamber of commerce and coin center um and uh and really get ahead of it and, and explain because i think for for regulators and politicians, they're also looking for answers. They're looking for thought leaders to explain the technology and show how it can really help. Mm. Um, so that's really kind of a big part of you know what we're trying to do is you know not only that, but to give it to the average person and show them this is why it's so cool. Yeah. You know, let's just let's break it down to a really simple, very easy. I'm going to send money. I'm going to receive money. I'm going to earn crypto, and then once I earn crypto, I can play with it. And what does it do? It allows me to send money anywhere in the world instantaneously. Right. It's digital cash on my phone, and right. I own it. That's that's really cool. I, I'm glad there's people out there like you, Marshall, who are who are okay and see the necessity and the value in helping politicians understand this. I, I imagine it's kind of like trying to trying to teach your grandma about BitTorrent. It's like, no, Granny, you got to click here, and then you're going to download it, and you're just going to download from like a hundred different places. But then you can send it, and you know, I mean. Yes, the world we live in, there's a lot of libertarian type people who are ideologically so on their own little platform that they believe that any type of cooperation with the government is is ludicrous, nonsensical. You're turning your back on us. We saw that just recently about uh, Shapeshift, and and they said that you know they're they're eventually going to require some level of AML and KYC, anti money laundering, and know your client. Um, for their exchange, because basically, you know, they're just a, a token exchange. What 
what are you what's your perspective on the the willingness to integrate and educate so that you can actually be a bridge which i think is so necessary in the legacy and the crypto blockchain financial worlds i i think that you know and and i i've been following what happened with shapeshift and and what's going on i think that's um part of the fincen guidance around virtual currency exchanges and and know your customer and uh, I think, you know, I was one of the first people on Shapeshift. I think my testimonial might still be on the site. <laughs> Eric is a legend. For um, sure. I think it's so cool. Uh, and it, it is kind of a bummer that, you know, that that, that regulation is kind of stifling that, that, that piece a little bit. But, you know, where I think this goes into and what I think is really starting to get really cool is that identity could be decentralized. It could be in, say, like a Civic, right? Or you could log in with Metal. Your identity could be... Um, could be a node or could be like an address or a node on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. And we could have that kind of reputation and trust layer, but we just haven't really start with that. That technology is just happening right now. Right. So it's going to force that kind of thing. I believe to happen a lot quicker, mm -hmm. um, you know, from the, from the regulator landscape and that side, I think a lot of people are just trying to wrap their heads around it to understand it. They want to see, you know, how are people, people being helped by it and how are people being hurt by it? And, you know, when they see people being hurt by it, like, you know, BitConnect or something like that, yeah, regulate those guys out of here. I don't want to be associated with them whatsoever, right. right? But then, you know, you look at Metal, you look at Shapeshift, you look at Coinbase, Circle, all these really amazing companies and platforms that are building really cool stuff. Give them the tools to build this and evolve this, you know, Civic with a decentralized identity, you mm -hmm. know, um, you know, state governments, federal governments start looking at these technologies and start saying, we can save a lot of money on identity theft and identity fraud. This is going to help people, right? Um, and how are we going to uh, integrate those technologies? And so, you know, for us, it's really about making it real. We have this kind of saying at Metal, it's not real till you eat it. Um, right, yeah. And can eat gold. <laughs> yeah, right. That's, that is a, that's a great, you know, point. You know, it's, uh, gold is, is really cool. And, you know, you mentioned Peter Schiff. I watched the Peter Schiff and Eric uh, Voorhees debate. I thought it was awesome. Yeah, for awesome. sure. Two really smart guys debating. I'm more on Eric's side, obviously. Obviously. But, um, but I think that, uh, you know, it's real when you eat it. And when people have that experience and they pop some metal inside the app and they're using the app just like Venmo, you know, why am I going to use Venmo anymore when I get paid to use uh, Metal Pay? And I not only earn metal, but I'm earning, you know, Ripple and Stellar and Litecoin and, you know, all these different and, and Dogecoin. And, oh, what's this one do? What's that one do? And yeah. I want to learn. I want to yeah. I want to start to play. Um, when I when I cash that out and I, I eat it or I send it over, you know, the um, over X Rapid over the Ripple network and it goes to a bank um, in, in, uh, in, in, uh, in um, South America or something like that. And it gets there instantly, um, yeah. you know, to a part of the world where currency is very volatile. Oh my God! Yeah, wow. we, I, I see it, Marshall. I see what's going on, and I want to be a part of it, and I want to play, and I want to have fun. And then you start to get really interested. I remember the internet circa 1995, 96. You know, you've got mail. We have yeah. to dial up. I remember yeah. dialing up the Prodigy MSN. You know, in the early 90s, I was, <laughs> I was really young. Yeah. Um, but you know, there was a time. When you had to use MS DOS, you know. Sure. <laughs> I can remember thinking that the entire internet was AOL. It's like thinking yeah. that the entire blockchain space is just Bitcoin. You know, it, yeah. it, it's enormous out there. And yeah, there's just so many use cases that are being developed. And, you know, I, I saw uh, I saw somebody, I can't remember who said it the other day on Twitter, but somebody said, the only people worried about the cryptocurrency prices right now are the non-producers and non-builders. I mean, when I, when I look around and talk to my friends in the circles that I'm in, everyone is head down building right now. And it's great because the, the sparkle of, you know, a thousand X returns or something aren't there at the moment. So you don't get caught up in all that nonsense. You're just head down building. Um, I, I, you've mentioned the metal token a couple of times. I don't think we've defined it very well or talked about it yeah. very well. What what is the metal token? How does that play into the overall metal pay app? And and can you just walk us through like a user experience of, of who and why someone would use metal pay, like just out in the real world? Yeah. So, you know, when I saw Bitcoin in 2009, it took me, like I said, it took me a couple months to kind of wrap my head around it. How does it work? Um, and, you know, how does it have value? And, you know, the initial value proposition was hash cash, was Adam Back's hash cash and proof of work. 
And it's basically saying like, I'm going to take a dollar bill and I'm going to light it on fire. And then in this hand, a Bitcoin is going to appear. Um, and we could, we could reverse it, but there's like this alchemical process. And what is that process? I'm going to burn so many clock cycles per second, you know, to guess at random numbers to win the block reward. And that cost me real electricity and hardware costs and that kind of thing. So I'm taking real world value and, uh, you know, energy is, energy is not destroyed. It just, it just changes form, converted to right? Bitcoin, right? It's converted to Bitcoin. So that was a genius idea to convert, you know, to prove in 2009 that, and you know, in the original, you know, white paper and discussion, well, in the original discussions on P2P foundation was, oh yeah, anybody can just open up your laptop right now. And just, mm -hmm. and I, I burned out um, the, uh, my 2008 MacBook Pro, I brought it into Apple and they're like, what are you doing on this? Like, <laughs> They've never seen device. such stress. <laughs> yeah, it was all warped, the plastic bars all warped and cracked. <laughs> They're like, do you leave this thing open and it's running at like full steam? I'm like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I'm a gamer. Uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, um, and so I thought, well, this is brilliant, but if it takes off, what's going to happen? You know, this is going to get industrialized. This is going to get taken over probably, you know, by a nation like, uh, you know, like China, for example, mm -hmm. you know, if all these miners are being made and sold to people, I could see a future in which they're going to stop selling those miners commercially. And then they're going to uh, those consolidate. Those factories are going to buy the smaller factories and consolidate and consolidate and consolidate. And mm -hmm. at some point, the power company strikes a deal with the largest miner, and then right. the government steps in. And uh, before you know it, we have more, yeah, yeah. This thing is more centralized than fiat has ever been ever. Right. right? We've got every um, bitcoiner's worst nightmare. Proof of work turns into centralization. Right. Right. And so I thought, you know. Um, I'm looking, you know, I'm seeing proof of stake. I'm seeing different, you know, um, DPOS. I'm seeing all these new models kind of pop up 2012, 2013, 2014. Um, you know, there's the Ripple, the Stellar model, more of a distributed ledger. But mm -hmm. there's all these different kinds of consensus algorithms. And I thought, well, I think that the consensus algorithms are going to improve to a point that I think proof of work is going to become irrelevant. I think it was a great starting point, but I do, I, I'm a firm believer that I do become, believe it will become irrelevant at some mm -hmm. point. And we're burning a tremendous amount of energy. Um, There's you know, more efficient to, ways out there. We don't need to. We don't need like we needed to in 2009 to prove that it's worth money anymore. That's clear. Right. That's been proven. We're over right. that. Now we need to figure out a way to show the value to prove that it has value in people's everyday lives. Mm. This is the next step. And so I thought, well, if we could have a distribution model that everybody could participate in, like it was like mining was in 2009, 2010, mm -hmm. then we'd be talking and everybody has a mobile phone. And what is the ultimate form of work these days that everybody does outside of their day job? Social media, social media interaction, interacting with people. Um, and if we, you know, if I like something, I should earn it. I thought, you know, when Steam appeared, I thought that's really cool. Human powered proof of work, I think is the next evolution. And, you know, my concept behind metal was that everybody could have a little piece. Uh, the original idea behind Bitcoin, the number 21 million, was that, um, that everybody in the world, 7 billion at the time, could have 3% uh, of one Bitcoin, right. right? And that was a really, that was like mind blown. And if, if, if Bitcoin took over all monetary instruments, then you know one Bitcoin would be worth, or uh, actually, sorry, the three percent I believe would be worth eighty billion dollars or something absurd. Right. Um, and so everybody gets you know full economic reset, start over. Everybody gets to kind of have this equal playing field and opportunity. And I thought, well, that's never going to happen because proof of work mining is going to consolidate and consolidate, and and then people may not see the value. And you know, flash forward, um, flash forward almost ten years. Here we are today. People have yet to really see the value. Proof of work has become highly centralized. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing because I think that the player, the players that are that that where it did that go to kind of centralized have demonstrated responsibility. Mm -hmm. But that being said, it still is centralized, right. right? And these things are much more centralized than people want to believe. You know, because when Vitalik says fork, we fork. Right. Um, you know, when Blockstream says this is what we're going to do with the Bitcoin Core Git, that's what we do. Yeah. Right. Um, and so I think, you know, I look at Apple as an amazing company. I was, you know, had the first iPod and, you know, Metal's philosophy is to say, let's give people amazing consumer front end facing apps, apps that you would want to use. We're looking at what's already popular and mainstream. That's peer to peer payments. That's micro investing. 
and portfolio management for, um, for the younger generation on the fly. And let's integrate crypto and let's open this whole world of cryptocurrency to people that have never seen it before. But let's first just put it in their hands like Dogecoin. What's this all about? Such fun, much, much wow. wow. There you go. <laughs> yeah. That's it, right? right? Let's make it fun. And then we can start to build the ecosystem around it because I think we have an infrastructure problem. And by infrastructure problem, I mean, we have so much. We have so much, but, but very few front end. We have no front end to this whole thing, oh, but man. we've got infrastructure for days. We have hundreds of coins building infrastructure. Yeah. But where's the front end? We yeah. need front end. We need use case. It's like we've got so, developers everywhere, but where are all of our creatives to, to help this like make sense? Where are our user experience people? Like we're, we're building the foundational stuff that will scale like EOS. You know, I'm a big delegated right. proof of stake uh, supporter. We're, we're starting to get the blockchains that can scale with speed, zero transaction cost. Right. But nobody's really used a blockchain That's outside right. of just like kind of a, a crappy wallet interface. That's right. And, you know, just sending crypto to crypto and it's just one crypto per person to another. And it's, it's, it's basically like every crypto conference. It's all the same people, yeah. you know, seeing each other in different cities every couple of weeks. Yeah. Right. Like that's, uh, you know, that's what it feels like right now. And I think what's really interesting is that, you know, there's, I think the, the statistic is something like 30 or 40 million people using cryptocurrency. It's growing really rapidly, but still there are games in the app store that have more users than all of cryptocurrency combined, For like, sure. a, you know, like an angry birds or something. Oh, yeah. like that. And so that shows you how early we are. And my belief is that if I can make this thing expand in a, in a really rapid fashion, and we can put a lot in people's hands, then we can start to have the belief and the experience and, um, you know, and, and that, that uh, Pavlovian, that serotonin burst, like, oh, wow, I just, I just earned some crypto from just making a payment. Is that what crypto is? It's, it's something that everybody can participate in. I thought only a few people could participate in this thing. Now I'm, I'm going to get my grandmother on this, my, my mother, my father, my sister, my brother, all my friends, my whole family, everyone is going to try this because, I want to share this experience with them. And so the idea behind metal, a cryptocurrency is to reach as many people as possible in a really awesome way, starting with a really strong front end experience mm -hmm. and building the front end, building, bringing all the people there first. I saw an article from Jackson Palmer, the Dogecoin creator a friend of mine uh, posted um, recently about the, if they build it, if, if you build it and they will come philosophy is wrong mm -hmm. because if you build it, they might come. They might. But I think that you also have to be thinking about why would people want to come to the game in the first place? Right. What's in it for them? And so when you start to think about those questions and you start to think, well, yeah, if we build the infrastructure, they, yeah, eventually they'll come, right? But we also have to have something really awesome. And when I look to Apple, I think, wow, there's, you know, iPhone. Why would I want to build an app uh, using Swift? Because Apple products are amazing right. and everybody uses them. And, you know, the, you, once you connect into this ecosystem, you get all these cool things. You get Apple Watch, you get Siri, you get, you know, iMessage, you get, you get all these, you know, amazing things that, that, uh, that Apple really laid the foundation. So we're taking a front end approach and building from the front end. We, we leveraged Ethereum, which is amazing, uh, a blockchain and network. Um, and then we're, you know, going beyond that to say, we're going to start with the front end approach and then we're going to uh, leverage the, the blockchain infrastructure um, and start to build out our own blockchain network and our own system. Um, but first we have to give people a, a real reason to w why they want to come here. And we've always said as a company, we're agnostic. We look at all the best technologies and we want to integrate them. We want to build on Apple. We want to build on Ethereum. Sure. And if, it, if, and when, and where, when we start building our own in-house technologies, because we see the direction that that's going, we want to, we want to give a better experience for our customers, for our developers. Um, yeah, let's do it that way. So taking the Apple approach and giving people like a really awesome experience before we say, okay, let's build all this infrastructure because it's already there. Yeah, Apple didn't become so huge because they had the best hardware. It was a combination right. of good hardware and a great user experience. Design, design, yeah. putting design front and foremost. And that is when you open our apps, you're going to see. Um, you know, we have, we actually have a, a, a awesome, amazing Apple designer who, um, who has, uh, Sid Parihar has done a great job, um, with our, with our apps. And, you know, I really feel that putting, um, you know, design at the forefront of a user experience is what's going to make 
this this whole thing really take off because if I don't want feel like I want to lick the buttons off the screen or I have like a really strong desire to open this app, right? You know, if it looks cold and ugly, like I hate to say it, but a lot of the early crypto apps are really ugly, but they're sure. highly functional. I mean, mm. Electrum is highly functional, but right. like visually, oh god, it right? Was, it was a racket. Uh, yeah, yeah, but but functionally, it's great. Um, and so that is really kind of you know at what we're trying to do. I look at um. You know, I look at uh, OS 9 and OS 10 and saying, you know, the, the Apple built on top of Unix. That was brilliant. That's a great open source technology. Windows sucks. Um, I, I'll say it. It sucks. It's terrible. But OS 10 is fantastic. Mm. And they took, they took open source technology and they stayed agnostic and they leveraged it in such a way that they could really, uh, you know, allow the open source community to, to build a lot of that infrastructure and then leverage that to put beautiful design and a beautiful front end face on it to say, that's it. That's, that's the computer that people want. That's the phone that people want. And, you know, flash forward from, you know, 1997 when, when we were on Napster and I, you know, I think in 98, maybe the first iPod came out, I think it was like this thick. Um, I had the first iPod, I had the G3, the G4, the iMac, all that. And, uh, and it was like, wow, this is really happening. Flash forward to today, and a few people had it. Now I walk into a cafe in San Francisco, every single laptop is every an single iPhone. person. Every yeah. single phone is an iPhone. Like yeah. everybody's got an Apple Watch. Like they clearly hit the nail on the head by using by staying agnostic, using open source technology, leveraging, you know, the open uh, frameworks. And, uh, and then putting a really beautiful design on it and really focusing on user experience and asking why would people want to use my products? Why mm. would they want to use my, you know, um, you know, an Apple laptop or iPhone or in, in our case, why would they want to use metal uh, payment products? Why would they want to use our um, banking products, our investment products, our peer-to-peer -peer mobile payment apps? Um, and so, you know, I looked at what was out there. I looked at, you know, Venmo and Square Cash and I'm happy to say that like, we just had that the space hasn't innovated a lot. It's just it hasn't. And well, it's you know, so it's, protectionism, it doesn't have to yeah, innovate that much. Yeah, exactly. It's so hard to do it. Right. There's, there's not so a lot of competition. And yeah, there, there's not a lot of competition. So I thought, man, let's do that heavy lifting. Let's do it because it's worth it. And let's put in that energy. And, and you know, as a company, I saw this this uh, ICO explosion about to happen. Mm -hmm. And um, it's interesting because metal, we could have raised you know, a lot more than we did. But what we did is we did a small private offering. We raised, uh, you know, $3 million last year. We did 2 million in our private token and 1 million in equity. And then we matched our equity investors with, with our token, with our cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I said, I want to put my money where my mouth is. I want to prove it. I don't want to raise some absurd amount of money that is not part of our budget. I want to, uh, I want to take $3 million and turn it into something absolutely amazing. And if it does, the metal that our company holds, I believe, will become much more valuable. Mm -hmm. And that proved to be a really, really smart and strong strategy because now when we're talking to other payment partners, when we're, we're talking to other investors, they say, wow, you did all this with $3 million? $3 million bucks, right. Oh, my God. You didn't right? raise $75 million. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's companies that raise you know, a lot. Now, I'm not going to point any fingers or anything, but I'm not seeing a lot of development coming out, right? Right. And um, – and, uh, you know, there is something to lighting a fire under your chair, staying hungry. Every good entrepreneur should stay hungry. Um, I, you know, uh, I, I certainly, we certainly could have raised more and maybe hindsight, yeah, maybe raise an extra million or two. But I would say that, you know, put your money where your mouth is. If you're going to really change the world, you have to believe it. You have to be passionate mm -hmm. and you have to be driven, you know, by something greater than just wanting to, 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 to have wealth, right, or to have influence. You want to change the world. And that is what I see with a lot of cryptocurrency entrepreneurs. And when I think people get metal pay and they get this app and they get crumbs, they get the app and they go, wow, I can do this. I'm earning metal. I'm micro investing in cryptocurrencies. Um, I'm, I'm going to start building on top of these apps because it looks like they have an API and an SDK and everything that I can build mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. And there's, gonna, there's a lot of traction growing here. And that is supported by the base of cryptocurrency as a whole. Man, it's like a, it's like a rocket ship. Um, yeah. And it's gonna happen, and and yeah, we're in the doldrums. People, you know, oh, you know, Bitcoin went to twenty thousand, metal went to fourteen. It's under a dollar. Oh my God, my heart. But <laughs> but at the at the same time, you know, Ash, you and I, we were here. We we saw you know Bitcoin go from thirty dollars back to two ninety percent devaluation. That's right. And we saw that stuff happen. When I see this happen, when I see devaluation happen, I get excited because I think, all right, 
we're going to shake out some junk. Right. We're going to get to like the real passionate people yeah. that no matter what happens, if Bitcoin goes to a penny, we're still here. Yeah. We're still talking about it. We're going to keep building on top of it. Will, will blockchain solve all the world's problems? No. But will it create something really amazing? Yes, absolutely. It, it's so. beautiful. The passion that you have is really beautiful. You know, here we sit in like the fourth bear market in cryptocurrencies. Again, the reports are coming out that everything's dead. And, you know, I saw today why Bitcoin is the next pets.com and such. E even someone like you that has to get licensing and has to get approval and has to constantly keep up with regulations. And I was in the banking industry. I know how that wears and tears on the morale of your team. What, yeah. is, what is it in your opinion that keeps your passion so strong and your energy so lively, even in what could be considered some of the, the depths right now? Yeah. You know um, well, I've gone through so many troughs in crypto that I've become like my, my skin has like gone from like this to like that. <laughs> and, uh, and I, now I, now I, I, I hear, Oh, Bitcoin's down. Oh, China FUD. Oh, regulations. Oh, you know, everybody's freaking out. I'm like, okay, I'm buying. Yeah. I'm buying a bunch. I'm building, I'm working. I'm so excited because I know what comes next mm. is another tier, another layer. And we just get a little bit closer. And I guess, you know, why I'm so passionate, why our team's so passionate is because we see the future. We see where this is going, and it's just as clear as day. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I reassert my team. You know, when, when, the, when this bear market started happening, I, I told everybody, guys, this is really exciting. It's really exciting because the fact that it's going into, like, the bear market, that was going to happen. It, it, it goes sure. so quickly and it drops quickly. That's natural market cycles. But I'm so excited because that tells me that the next cycle is coming. And yep. the next cycle is coming is going to be all these projects that raise – you know, a, a close to $20 billion over the, the past year are about to release some amazing software. And yes, just like every, just like every space and technology, you know, 90% of them will fail. Yes, it's true. But that 10%, those are the future Googles, Facebooks, Amazons, Apples, yep. you know, they're coming, they're coming. And, the, and this is coming in payments. And for me, I think it's so exciting because I love to be, uh, my friends always say, oh, Marshall's living in the future. He's got all these robots. He's, you know, whatever. Um, I love to live in the future and I love to think about where we're going to go in the future and to know that it's happening, to know that it's inevitable. It's just so exciting. I, I, we all want to put our name on it and be involved and say, you know, we saw it coming. So we, we just right. drilled down and we work till 1 a.m. in the office every night. And, you know, we don't really do that. But we kind of do sometimes, but don't worry, guys, we're not burning out. Uh, <laughs> um, um, but, uh, I, it's just it's just so exciting and you know that is what that's what drives us is you know the mission and the vision and the, the fact that you know, money could be an empowering experience it could be an amazing learning experience um, and it could be fun it could be really interesting and I think that you know I said something at a conference that got a, a lot of people to get really excited and stand up once and I said you know um, they, the question that was asked on a panel was um, what is uh, what is so exciting about blockchain technology and, you know, a couple of people gave like really drawn out, very technical answers. And my answer was, what's so exciting is it's the moment that we stop working for money and money starts working for us. Mm. Just very simple. You know, that the moment that we realize that we're in control, right. that is what resonates with you and I, Ash, is the, the freedom, the liberty. That's, that's what's right. so exciting. I mean, that's, that's a big part of the American ethos, but I think it, it resonates around the world. Everybody wants freedom. Everybody wants the ability to take control of their destiny, of their future. And I think a big part of it starts with money and finances. I mean, there's a lot of parts. There's health. There's, uh, you know, there's finance. There's family. You know, there, there's a lot of different p things. But, you know, um, when it comes to money, I, I, I just see this technology as exploding. And the fact that everybody can participate in what we saw with Dogecoin, that's what metal is bringing to the table. Uh, pretty soon we're about to launch the, this app and, and the, you know, the re, new reskin version of crumbs. And this is something that everybody can download and they can just, they can start earning crypto right away. And they're going to go into the discover section and see, Oh, this is what metal's about. This is how pop works. These are what all the other, this is what ripples about. This is what Stellar's about. This is what Litecoin's about. This is what EOS is about. Yeah. You know, this is what all these things are. And it's like reading a book. It's like reading a novel, but now you're in, in it. You're a part of it. And that is like, that is so cool. How yeah, often you, do you get 
to say that you're like a part of the future of technology and you're there. You know, I was I was one of the first people on Facebook because I went to school in Boston. I had a Northeastern email address. There was only like five campuses that could get into Facebook because you had to have one of the yeah. five uh, Boston school campus email addresses. Right. And you get in and I'm like, oh, wow, it's I can poke, I can wall post, I can like. Right. Okay. What That's do I get for, if for participating in this thing? I, I get social validation. Um, I post a picture of me, you know, out at a music concert or eating like some delicious food and people like it. And I'm like, yes, people like what I do, my things. Right. Um, but I don't get paid for it. Right. Facebook, Facebook gets paid for that. Right. right? That was the amazing and, thing about Steam. You know, it's like, holy yeah. crap, I can do all yeah. this and get paid in tokens. And, you know, the whole blockchain social media space is about to blow up, I think. Just like the, the micropayment space or just the payment space like you're in, integrating with the legacy system. So it makes sense now. You can have some of your tokens into cash, into government cash, or you can right. collect some of these tokens that... Right. You, it, it's like collecting baseball cards or or collecting digital files back in the day. You know, whenever you're talking about being part kind of on the ground floor and the excitement of seeing like digital programmable sovereign money starting to spread out around the world, it reminded me about like the early file sharing days and how we could see it. And we knew it wasn't going to stop. We would get depressed when Napster got shut down, you know, Metallica back in the day or maybe when right. Ba got shut down. But in right. the back of our heads, we always knew like this is a paradigm shift the internet will never be the same. We can now communicate by sending these content files to each other. And now it's the same in money. Um, you know, I want to start wrapping up here, Marshall. You've mentioned crumbs a couple of times, and I don't think we've really talked about it too much. What is crumbs and how, and how does that appeal to someone new coming into the crypto space? Yeah. So crumbs is a company that we acquired earlier in the year. Um, and, uh, they started the app as a micro investment app for cryptocurrencies. Um, and, uh, really, really smart, um, founders, uh, Patrick Murzowski, um, and Car Car uh, Carson Haloyan. And, uh, they, they came up with this idea of, Hey, you know, we should make an app that allows people to invest like acorns, but could get crypto. And that's a great way for people to en enter into it. Um, since they joined our company and we've been building out the product and the vision for it, it's so much more than that. It's going to become your kind of like your Coinbase, uh, but automate that investing. So, hey, you're up. You just bought some Bitcoin. It's 30 percent up. A little pop up comes up and says, hey, you're 30 percent up. Do you want to take your principal? Do you want to take your profit? Do you want to hodl? You know, to automate that whole thing, because we're not sitting by the you know, most people are not sitting on the exchange 24 hours a day. Opportunities are missed. Let's automate this thing. Let's make it really easy. I could, yes, I can buy and sell, but I can also micro invest. I can also daily, weekly, monthly buy. And we know as long-term crypto people, you mentioned it earlier on before we started filming, uh, is, it can cost average, right? Yeah. And that's what we do as smart crypto people. We cost average. We buy a little bit every day. We buy a little bit over time. And uh, that's what an experienced crypto person does. So we want to pass that experience to the new people coming in. So, you know, at the peak of the bull market, you don't go, okay, let me mortgage my house, you know, refinance. No, that's not how you invest in this thing, okay? You want to invest over time. You know, you definitely want to buy when everybody's screaming it's over and there's like a mushroom cloud on the front of Coindesk or whatever. That's a great time. Yeah. Um, you know, and, uh, and, you, and you, you definitely don't want to sell during those times, you know, and I don't want to give financial advice, right? But, you know, these are just general... These are just general basic things, right? That everybody knows, right? And um, and I think that uh, you know what's really cool about Crumbs is that we you 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 come into the app, you sign up, you link your bank account, you choose you know just a general basket of for, uh, cryptos or Bitcoin only or metal only or Ethereum only or or you can kind of customize and then it just starts to buy a little bit every day and over time when it goes up. You, you, you don't really look at it. You check, you check the news, you check the portfolio. I, I hate to say you don't really look at it because that's what everybody does. Every you, day, Blockfolio. Yeah, you, yeah, every day. Yeah, so Crumbs is really cool. Blockfolio is also really cool. You know, you, you open it up and you want to you read your Blockfolio signals. Or you open it up and you want to read your Crumbs Discover section, check your prices. And then over time, you start to become a more seasoned trader. You start to develop iron hands. And, uh, you know, and this carries through to all investments, all different kinds of areas. And I think that crypto is a highly volatile market. It's really fun to trade and to play in. I don't like markets that are boring and don't move for 10 years, right? Like I want something that's moving, right? Oh, yeah. Up and down, like the, the excitement. And so Crumbs brings that excitement, that whole experience, and also just the retail buying and selling as well. Um, and that automation too. We're starting to build out that automation. So 
you know, you see a message and it says, this is how much you're up, this is how much you're down, you know, readjust your strategy, take your profits, uh, you know, if it's down and, and you have losses, um, you know, showing you inspiring quotes from other famous investors and uh, financial icons that, you know, have, you know, cut their teeth in, you know, the toughest uh, markets in the world, you know, give you little clips and pieces from them to inspire you. And, you know, mm. we're going to open up this app instead of just opening up and checking prices like we kind of historically did. I want a holistic view. I want to open it up. And when the market's down, yes, Biddle, right? Biddle. Right. Uh, get, yeah, however you say that. Uh, <laughs> get inspired, right? And uh, and when the market's up, yeah, yeah, now all these new people are coming and send them some metal. Now let's um, celebrate. Interact. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. Um, uh, do a couple different things. And um, that is that is the experience that I want people to have. And I think that it's, uh, you know, someone very wise once told me, meet people where they're at. Um, that's what great applications, mm. that's what great software does is it right. speaks to you. It meets you exactly where you're at for what you want to do. And it does it really well. And it's, it's almost scary intuitive. It's, it's predicting things that you, Oh, do you need this? Well, yes, I do. Right. right? Um, and, and that feeling of like, Oh, wow, they really thought this through. That's a great experience. And that is, you know, what, one of the things that inspires me about technology is that, you know, it can be automated. It can be you know, so many um, mund mundane and uh, boring kind of things that we just kind of, you know, you know, start the car, uh, you know, put on your blinker, or whatever. Okay, right. we're not gonna have to do that in the future. Not we're for much longer. And I'm gonna sit back and I'm gonna drink. My crypto is gonna be trading and automatically investing. Oh, take your profits. Yeah. Okay, buy some more. It's down. Okay. You know, yeah. everything is gonna move so much faster in the future because robots, technology, AI, uh, cryptocurrency, all these things are gonna be, you know, automated to to more or less of an extent. And it's just going to be so cool. So we as humans can focus on, you know, the really creative and truly awesome things and really have a higher quality of life. And that's, you know, that's the future that I see. That's and what I we're building. Like, that, yeah, that, 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 that's the liberty minded future. You know, it's like, I mean, I've, I've got lights that I can control with my freaking phone. Yeah. I mean, what, what, we're living in the future. Um, yeah. you know, I, I'm on your website here, Marshall, and I see that you're, you're rolling out, you're launching in states right now. Can you That's right. give us an update on the Metal Pay launch, which states you're launching first in and what people should be excited about and how they can keep up with you? Yeah, so, um, so we're launching in 34 states. Initially, we thought we were launching in 39, but we identified a few high-risk states that we're going to hold off on until we get those, uh, those MTLs, the money transmission licenses. And we do feel those will come fairly quickly as part of a uh, 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 aggregate system called NMLS nationwide multi-state licensing system. But, uh, you know, 34, we do have more than half of the continental U S mm -hmm. um, and it's, uh, that's how we're going to roll out then state by state, similar to kind of like Coinbase and circle launching. We're going to just start plugging in states. This is because we have to go through the regulatory process. Um, but, uh, I think it's, it's going to be a really awesome experience very soon. I can't say the day when, um, <laughs> But I'll tell you, it's right around the corner. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so so um, if you if you guys are uh, watching, you know, uh, check out Token Fest. Uh, we'll be there in a few days, uh, so you'll be able to see some stuff. Is that in Maybe, Boston? Uh, that's in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, right. Big big Liberty Town. That's um, right. And uh, the the home of Liberty, right? Or maybe New Hampshire is. I don't know, but they're very close together. <laughs> um, so, uh, so yeah, you know, I, for us, uh, the launch is really going to be about, you know, reaching, um, you know, college campuses, younger people, people that use Venmo. Um, if you use Venmo, I, I want people to come and try this thing out. So we have about 5,000 people on the test flight where, you know, we're getting close to like maxed out um, in terms of like our test flight. And uh, I think the response has been really overwhelming, really strong that people really love the experience. So Crumbs is going to get a new reskin and Metal is going to launch officially. And you're going to be able to have these two products side by side. One is uh, micro investing, retail purchasing, buying and selling. The other one is a replacement for Venmo, Zelle, Square, all mm. these other apps. And they all have all the coolest, latest cryptos, all the cool news information. And it really kind of immerses you in that experience. And we're just going to keep adding states. And as we're doing that, we're also going to roll out pretty soon, uh, probably at some point next year, uh, early next year, Europe as well um mm -hmm. and then just keep expanding state by state and and one of the ideas with metal is you know when we started building the product we thought well we should just open it to everyone at first um and if you if you're not in a country that's supported you could use the cryptocurrency aspect and otherwise not but then we thought wait a second let's the people first coming into this app should have kind of like the full experience so let's get a lot of 
really diehard fanatical fans to have the full complete feature set first. And mm -hmm. then once we're ready and we have a lot of momentum, then we'll turn it on for world and let you sign up in other parts of the world where we may not have banking access yet. So that's kind of the bigger plan. And then as we're doing that, you know, that front end approach, now we have, you know, maybe more users, you know, I can only dream, but maybe more of the users than Bitcoin because Bitcoin doesn't have a lot of users no. when you really boil it down. Right. And if we could have a lot of people using this thing, then, you know, that's, you know, that's when we start to build out our own blockchain and also leverage other chains. I think it's an interoperable world. In my opinion, I mm -hmm. think it's all these things are going to be connected. So I'm a big believer in, you know, connecting all the blockchains. Um, and a lot of people are talking about it. Um, but I think before we can really worry about that so much, let's bring everybody to the table. Let's start the party. So, yeah, and, and let's see what technology is going to support the size of communities that, that we need to bring on board. Like, you know, right. we've talked about the prices of these coins and stuff. But at the end of the day, I, I believe that you know, since all value is subjective, these blockchains and the value associated with them it is only representative to the the type and size of community that they support. Um, you know, I, I even on a much smaller scale, like teams as communities. You know, I'm on your website and I see that you're hiring for a couple positions. Um, That's right. Director of Finance, Senior Android Engineer. I appreciate yep. you just not sticking to iPhone only. Uh, yep. Senior Backend Engineer. But then I, I kept scrolling down and I, something caught my attention, Marshall. It says Airbnb. And I was like, why is Airbnb on the Metal Pay site? And I'll just read this if you don't mind. It yep. says, um, we offer a flexible work environment with unlimited vacation time and a generous Airbnb credit every month so that you can get away anywhere, anytime. And I push this perspective of building freedom and living a free and flexible lifestyle. And a lot of that for me, as someone who doesn't have children, I don't have a mortgage, you know, I'm, I'm very liquid and flexible. For me, that's very appealing. You know, back when I used to work at a desk job, every morning getting up at seven o'clock and having to go in same drive same place monotony you know what does stuff like this do whenever you're trying to hire talent what does what does offering airbnbs or offering this flexibility do for your team's morale yeah i think we built um you know that's a great question and, and you know part of that was really creating a really awesome amazing culture and you know, what you're, what you're saying, you know, about, uh, about being, you know, um, free and being able to travel and, and get out you know, and think outside the box and all the things that we've been talking about, that's the culture that I want to build. I want to build a culture of growth. I want people to have the opportunity to be able to, um, to travel and to do these things. And so at our company, growth is a big theme. We decided to offer some really cool things. One of those things was uh, we want people to use this Airbnb credit every month. So even if they're just going to drive down the street, and go three blocks and stay in a different place to, yeah. to you know, refresh your mind, to get out, to, to think differently. That's something that we want our employees to do. We want, we want to encourage them to travel because I think um, uh, uh, travel is a, you know, is, is, what, is what helps you learn, what helps you grow. And um, that's something that we included. We also include free language classes. We also um, have, you know, uh, we have a, a friend of mine, a chiropractor, come in the office, give adjustments, you know. We have unlimited vacation time. Um, you know, I looked at Richard, some of the things that Richard Branson was doing. I thought that was really cool. And, you know, I want to inspire my team to um, really, uh, you know, think outside the box and be free and to be in that mental state where you can really create and you can really build and you really love your team around you because, you know, it's just, it's just a group of people that really thinks differently and wants to um, build amazing things and to not get so stressed and get so stuck in the moment. Um, and so I think we're building a really amazing culture at Metal. And we have a motto. We say, always act in good faith with full transparency and accountability. That's mm -hmm. our motto. And uh, we, we come back to that for everything we do, for everything that we're building. And, um, you know, and then also just our day-to-day -day culture is really fun. You know, we have that transparency, that accountability. We also have this wild creativity and passion and imagination and excitement. And uh, that's like, that's our ethos. That's what we're building on top of. And uh, I love it. I mean, I love my team. I love, I love coming into work. I, I walk in, everybody walks into the office like, yes, hey, what's, up, what's going on? Nobody walks in like, oh God. Oh, this again. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it should, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, you, know, you said think differently twice and it reminds me of Steve Jobs, you know, think different. Uh, yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure he is. Um, how, 
first off, this has been a great conversation. I, I've loved the energy. I've loved the throwback to digital file sharing from back in the, in the day. That really strikes with me very deeply. I, I, I can still remember in like 2000 in my dorm room, like just being amazed with finally I'm not on a dial up modem. And you know, this, yeah. this energy is contagious, isn't it? And it's just so beautiful to be able to commit as much time as you want to with people like you in a space like blockchain, passionately building things that we know are going to make a difference and create freedom in the world. And that's what it's all about, people. How are that's you right. going to build freedom? How are you going to build freedom for yourself? And how are you going to build freedom for the world? Marshall, um, how should people keep in touch with you, keep up to date with Metal Pay, uh, any social links and any shout outs you want to give or the types of people you're looking to hire and work with? Yeah, you know, um, go to go to metalpay.com, crumbsapp.com, uh, sign up on our email list. Uh, Metal pays me on Twitter, on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Reddit, and um, yeah, I just I want to give a big thank you to my team, to all the people that supported me, for Ash, for you having me on the show, the whole community. We're going to do something really amazing, and uh, no matter what anybody says, you know, saying that that this isn't the future, it is. Know it, know it in your heart. Build on top of these things. Uh, yeah, blockchain may not solve all the world's problems, but we're about to solve some really amazing problems. And um, I'm I'm just really excited to be a part of it and and to be you know in the community to be there while it's happening. I, I'm so grateful. You're, so you're, thanks. You're a veteran of ten years now in this space. I, I appreciate you know what you've done, putting your capital to work, putting your you know putting your action where your mouth and where your philosophy is. So you're for sure a Liberty Entrepreneur, Marshall. Thank you so much for coming on the Liberty Entrepreneurs podcast. And until next time, everybody, you know what to do. Keep building freedom. Thanks, Ash.